JWST has been hit by a teeny tiny meteoroid. Don't panic though, it'll be okay. Between May 23rd and May 25th, 2022, one segment of JWST's primary mirror was hit by a tiny micrometeoroid, approximately the size of a grain of sand. This sounds very small, but dust-sized particles are typically moving at about 10 to 15 kilometers per second relative to the Webb telescope. So the impact would actually be pretty powerful. It means that the impact would probably have produced a visible hole or dent or crack in the mirror segment. But since JWST has no camera looking at itself, we can't actually see the mirror that closely. That said, Webb did take a selfie of sorts using its secondary mirror during the calibration phase, but I haven't heard anything about whether this could be used to see any damage caused by this impact. The team only know about the impact because they can see the change in the quality of the data they're getting back from the scope. The bad news is that this impact has caused a marginally detectable effect in the data. The good news is that the telescope is still performing at a level that exceeds all of its mission requirements, and none of Webb's scientific schedule moving forward has been changed or delayed. This means that even though the impact has very slightly reduced the collecting area of Webb, it won't lower the quality of the images in any significant way, and it's still more than capable of achieving everything it was designed to do. This sort of impact isn't a surprise, by the way. Any spacecraft has to be well prepared for micrometeoroid strikes, because while space is pretty empty, it's not completely empty. There are millions of these tiny meteors flying around at high speeds, and so Webb was well prepared and tested for this sort of thing. It expects to be hit many more times over its scientific lifetime. These micrometeoroid impacts are thoroughly tested for on the ground before the launch of a telescope like Webb. Engineers used a combination of computer simulations and actually hitting test pieces of mirror with tiny impacts to study the effect they'd have, and they use this data to do what they could to limit the effects of these impacts when they actually do happen in space. Admittedly, this most recent impact was larger than all of the sizes that the engineers assumed while doing the modeling work, and it was beyond what was tested on the ground as well. But luckily, it still hasn't had too much of an effect on the science that Webb will do. Also, Webb can correct for this sort of thing by slightly repositioning its mirrors, by readjusting the position of the affected segment very slightly and cancel out any distortion caused. This has already been done for the segment C3 of Webb, which is the one hit by this micrometeoroid. It's this one down here. The segments are all labeled in a way that I don't fully understand. This sort of inner ring is labeled clockwise as A1 to A6. I get that, that's fine. But the outer ring of mirror segments has labels that alternate, going B1, C1, B2, C2, all the way around. If anyone knows why they're labeled like that, then please do let me know in the comments down below. While flying, it's also possible to maneuver web to avoid known meteor showers and protect the mirror. Although this one wasn't part of such a shower and it's being classified as an unavoidable chance impact. However, as a result, a new team of specialized engineers has now been formed to study ways of mitigating micrometeoroid hits of this scale. Even so, Due to the size and sensitivity of the mirror, the team expects continued hits to slowly, but gracefully, degrade the telescope's quality over time. But on the plus side, this data will improve our knowledge of the dust environment at Lagrange Point 2 and help future missions. This wasn't even the first hit either, but it was the largest, and we learned that Webb had already been hit by four smaller, but still measurable in the data and image quality, meteoroid strikes before this, which is exactly the sort of frequency predicted before launch. Just remember that measurable in the image quality means to a computer, and it's a very tiny effect. So the images will look almost exactly as they would have done without the impacts to our regular human eyes. Don't panic about lost beauty just yet. JWST also isn't alone in suffering these sorts of tiny impacts. Just take a look at this section of the Hubble Space Telescope's solar panel. The panel had hundreds of impact craters ranging from microns to micrometers in diameter, after two years in space. But even the pretty sizable ones didn't stop the telescope from doing its incredible job. If these impacts aren't big enough to satisfy your schadenfreude, then just take a look here at the Harlon J. Smith telescope, which was actually shot several times with a handgun in 1970. Despite this, the telescope carried on working and observing, using the mirror that literally had bullet holes in it, and it produced images of the same quality as before. 
although the light collecting area was reduced by an inch, or 2.5 centimeters or so, from 107 inches to 106 inches, due to these holes. If this telescope can survive being shot, I think Webb's gonna be all right with a few relatively small dinks for a while yet. Thanks for watching the video, everyone, and please subscribe if you enjoyed. Until next time, stay safe, team. I'll see you soon. Bye.